Hello students, it's Miss Hello students, it's Mrs. Surly, and I'll teach you some facts about Mega and how to analyze some of the things that you can visualize with Mega. The first thing we need to do is to load a sequence. So from the Mega home screen, you choose a line. You go under the Edit View Sequencer Files under Trace. This is going to give you an option for your folders and what we're going to look at is um, in this tutorial is yeast, Hintinger Lab, KS, who is the scientist, her first sample of the year. I just want to show you something before we go. Do you see where it says files of type, all files? If I choose the .abi, I see some. If I do the state and file, I see others. So I generally like to have it defaulted to all files. Otherwise, sometimes I'm looking for something and I think I don't have it, and it's really there. So I selected YHKS1. I'm opening it, and then I get a window that pops up in front of the main screen. I want to remind you that over here is the ability to control your wave height. I just want to turn mine up a little bit so I can see the differences. Take a moment and take a look at the left side of your screen as compared to the right side of your screen. Do you notice any differences with the wave appearance? And I'll give you just a moment. You probably are able to see the pattern of a lot of messiness right here. Now I do see some background noise right along the bottom on the right side but is nowhere as busy as the left side. So this is going to be an invalid read. And what happens is the machine that's reading the DNA um, illuminescence takes a little bit to get going. But I want to be able to mask that. So what I'm going to do, there's a couple different ways to do it. I could just visually take a look and like, oh, you know, it starts to clear itself right around here. And I can click on a nucleotide. And then, oh, I should see a line there. Then when I go over here on this tab, I get to mask upstream of the cursor, and you can tell the gray part is to the left. So when I upload this file, this part doesn't feed into it. Now, do you notice some messiness right here? I might be concerned that I'm taking um, not enough off to mask. What I can do is if you choose this fast forward to the next end site and just so you notice I, I am on right now it's um, 10 will show up as the next bunch of letters goes all the way over if there was a if there were nucleotides that couldn't be read it would just keep stopping maybe I'd stop at 15 and then 18 or 21 and I'll look on the right side of the screen you can tell the DNA was done and it was trying to read something and it kind of goes crazy. So what you do is you visualize it and do the same process downstream. So I choose a nucleotide about where I want to stop. I mask the downstream side of the cursor and it's gone. On the top there are four different nucleotides and you might be saying okay What's a nucleotide? You've been using that term a few times in this um, broadcast, and there would form basic structural units of nucleic acid like DNA, and that's exactly what we're analyzing is DNA. So MEGA, the program that you're using, is to design to is designed to facilitate extensive sequence data analysis from an evolutionary perspective. So the click of a button, see the math that's on your screen right now? All that's done for you. These are algorithms that they have um, on file, and all that math is done for you. So now I have a file, and the next thing I want to figure out is how I can put that into the BLAST site to be able to figure out what organism I'm looking at. Maybe I have a whole new species. To be able to put it into the blast site, I need to choose edit. I'm going to copy this in the fast format. Control B from here will do the same thing. 
Now I just choose a browser and I'm pulling up Google Chrome. I'm choosing Blast, which is part of the NCBI site. And we are doing a nucleotide blast. I select this. I put my cursor into Enter Accession Numbers, GIs, or Fastest Sequences. And remember, we copied it. So now I have to paste it. And it's pasting just like you would in any type of Word program. Just want to take a look here. It looks like it's looking at, um, I don't want to look at humans or mice. I'm going to choose other. And instead of highly similarly or more dissimilar, I want somewhat similar. After I choose that optimization, for me, it just stays there. The cookies on your computer know that that's your choice. Once I choose for it to search, it takes just a moment, so I'll stop this um, so you don't have to watch the screen jump up and down while it's thinking. Okay, I have my results, and it took about 22 seconds. Remember just a moment ago when I showed you all that math? It's pretty amazing how it's going through all that information for 22 seconds. Um, this is telling me that it's found a lot of hits. If these lines are straight and there's a lot of them, it's saying, yeah, we have this in our database. We're pretty sure what it is. And when I pulled it up, the first thing I look at is your IDENT. I look at scores of 100 or 99 and sometimes 98. The max score we had on the nucleotides was 1,119, and that is the total score of what we had, so it covered 100%. I feel really confident. I select this. I'm finding out that it's Cloyovermyces lactase, the sequence number. It looks like this was right from the same lab that I work, so that's kind of exciting that it's in this database. And I want to learn more about the species itself. So up here you see an accession number. I'm going to select that. And it brings me over to the species. If I go towards the bottom, I still have the DNA makeup. I have a report that has been sent in from Dr. Hittinger and his colleagues. I can choose the organism and find out more information about it. For instance, various synonyms and a full lineage. And there you go. You can take a DNA sequence and figure out its species. And when you're investigating microbes and how untapped that whole microbial world is, you just might not get a hit. And that can be just as exciting. Maybe you've discovered something that hasn't been discovered before. So carry on, scientists. Remember, drink milk, read books.